Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship, and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Well, welcome, 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 my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we're having a very fun show about how lists can improve your sex life. Now, why would I create a show that seems so, I don't know, sounds boring, but actually, it's going to get exciting. Why do I know that? Because what I know is that there are probably things on this list that maybe you forgot that you wanted to try. Maybe you did try a long time ago and would like to try again and forgot about it. Or maybe there are things and ideas that you've never thought of. So creating lists, I'm a fan of lists anyway, but creating lists even for your sex life can actually create way more fun. Now, Imagine this, if you make a list and your lover makes a list and you're making a list with like 50 things on it, things you'd like to try, and you might come across a lot of things that are in common and you might come across things that, you know, you know, maybe you wrote down that your partner never even thought of, or your partner wrote down that they, you know, that you never thought of, it can start to expand the ideas of, you know, what you can do in your sex life. So I was actually working with a client the other day, and this was part of what inspired this show. And when I was working with the client, I mentioned to her that I was asking her to create her list. And, and I'm a big fan of this list that is the things you'd like to do, things you know you definitely don't want to do, and the things that you're willing to try. So you have a three-column list. I love the three columns because it can really be clear on sometimes when you write down the things that you'd like to do, it becomes really clear on the things you definitely don't want to do. You, you'll know what definitely doesn't work for you. And then you might even have some things that you're curious about that you're like, hmm, I don't know if that's a definite no. Maybe it's a maybe. And the fun thing about creating the list is it kind of helps you to open up to some new ideas, helps you to find out a lot about yourself, about what you like, about what you're curious about. And what I also found out with a lot of people is when I ask them to make this list, they kind of freeze. And they're like, but I don't even actually know what to put on the list. So as a result, I am actually creating a PDF that will be available for everybody and anybody who wants to be able to print that off. The list will be available by the end of 2020. So if you're listening to this in the future, uh, this is November 30th of 2020. But if you're listening to it in the future, the list will be available by the end of December of 2020. So you'll be able to find that on my website and you'll also be able to find it on Inspired Choices Network on one of my leaderboard ads. So look for that. It'll be a fun list that you can use to, to use, you know, check marks to tick off, to use as a reference for making your own list. Uh, so you'll be able to find that. I think it's going to be a fun, fun little thing to have. I'll be letting everybody know about that uh, off and on when I do mention the list and the shows for future. So you can remember this all you like, but just know this will be mentioned again and again and again. And what I, what I have noticed is that people tend to get stumped with ideas when it comes to what would I like for sex. I don't know. When was the last time somebody asked you, what would you like? You know, if you could have any kind of sex in the world, what kind of sex would you like? You might not have ever been asked what kind of sex you like. And that might have been a stumping question. 
to have somebody ask you something like, what kind of sex would you like? might actually send you into a tailspin thinking, well, I don't even know. I, I don't even know anything about sex. I know very little about sex. I've had missionary sex. I've had, and you, you might think that you don't even have much experience, but as you start to write the things you do like, you're going to probably notice that you, even if you've only been a solo person your whole life masturbating by yourself, you'll probably find that even in your fantasies, you have some ideas of things you like. And fantasies are a great source for assisting you in creating your list because fantasies will often be a guiding light to the things you'd either like to try or maybe would maybe like to try or things you'd like to keep a fantasy but never really try in real in reality. So one of the things that I'd like you to explore with your list when you're looking at the things you'd like to try, things you probably don't want to try, and things that you're willing to negotiate on trying, I'd like you to look at think, all these different what we would call sex acts that would be considered common sex acts. Well, some common sex acts would be stuff like missionary sex, heavy petting, French kissing, and maybe masturbation. But even that might be a little far-fetched for people, as I've been hearing more and more that it's actually quite unusual for people to be talking very openly about things like masturbation, and even more so that it's actually quite unusual for even couples to be masturbating in front of each other. So Folks, that's not my reality. So it kind of strikes me as interesting when I hear this from clients and other people I'm having conversations with when they say that, well, I've never done that. You know, I've been with my partner for X amount of years and I've never masturbated in front of them. And that fascinates me. I'm like, wow. So does your partner even know how to pleasure you if they've never even seen you pleasure yourself? Maybe they do. Maybe they actually don't really know how. So we have some things to put on our list. Now, if you have been listening for the last few minutes, you might have noticed me mention a few things that can assist you already with your list. I just mentioned things like mutual masturbation and masturbating in front of your partner. Well, that's two things that maybe you've never even done. So where would they go on your list? Would they go on the things I'd like to do, things I definitely don't want to do, or things I'd like to try? And I think what you'll notice is that randomly, if you've listened to many of my shows, randomly as you go through any of the episodes that I've done in the past, there may be things that strike you as unusual and interesting, and there may be things that strike you as off-putting. And all of those can go on your list somewhere they can fit on your list. So 300 episodes, I've had a lot of topics. There are at least 300 different acts that I've mentioned over the, um, over the years. And I'm going to give you some pretty basic ones that I'd like you to consider as well that, you know, maybe even you just didn't even realize you've engaged in. So after all of all of these all of these shows what are some of the things on your sex bucket list of ideas that you'd like to try so hmm i'm going to name a few and i'm going to see what kind of energy comes up for you guys when i say these so like i mentioned earlier mutual masturbation mutual masturbation hmm how do you feel about that one is it fun is it enjoyable is it something that you're doing with just your hands? Is it something you're involving toys with? Do you see how we've already just now created a few extra things on your sex bucket list? So mutual bastur- masturbation and masturbation. Mutual masturbation can be one of these uh, things that, that actually opens up to many more things. So it's like a little category unto itself. So I'd like you to look at that. If you're masturbating your partner, are you using your hands? Are you adding lubes? Are you adding heating lubes? Are you 
thinking about adding toys. For example, if you're masturbating somebody with a penis, are you using a masturbation sleeve? If you're not, contact me because I've got some great masturbation sleeves available from Pure Romance and they're awesomely fun. They have neat uh, different options for for uh, for masturbation just as a sleeve but also for some suction action so that's a lot of fun and we also have so many other fun things that you can use for masturbation that you might not have thought about so as i'm sitting here in my office i have i'm kind of surrounded by a lot of different uh, things i have a little case that has some crystals in it and one of them is a sphere it's a sphere of shungite and it's it's quite a nice size of a sphere about two and a half three centimeters across now that could be a lot of fun as something to roll up and down a penis too it has a little pressure it feels a little cool so it adds a cooling sensation and there we're adding more to the bucket list cooling sensations you might like something that is cold like ice uh, or like a rock to add some cooling sensations and again you can use ice to add to that masturbation list as well maybe you'd like to rub ice up and down your partner's penis or maybe you would like some ice rubbed on you and have you know if you're listening maybe you'd like ice on your penis or if you're you know, if you have female genitalia, maybe you'd like ice on your vulva. Whatever rocks your float, whatever rocks and floats your boat is actually the way to go. So I invite you to look around because I think you might be surprised at how many things you could create a sensual, sexual uh, adventure with that maybe you've never even noticed before that's around your space so like i mentioned looking over and i hear i see some uh, crystals in my my uh my little case and those could absolutely be used and there are other things lying around too you, you know there are things that are kind of fun like you know if i look into my kitchen i'm like wow we have a nice big cucumber well that could be used in different ways as well so I get it. Some of you might have just heard me say cucumber and you can use that too. And you might have thought, oh, that's disgusting. Well, if that's disgusting to you, that would go on your no fly zone. So that'll go on the part of your list that's definitely don't want to do. Now, I invite you to add all of these things because why? Because as you do, it actually starts you to realize the things that do work for you and the things that don't work for you. And maybe in general, maybe you don't like having food used on your body, which will create a bigger list on that. Maybe there are some foods you do like, maybe you like whipped cream, but you don't like cucumbers. Maybe you like strawberries on your body, but you don't want hot chocolate sauce on it. So get clear. The coolest thing about pleasure is usually when you know your body, usually I say that um, because I'm assuming there are people that this isn't true for, but when you know your body, it is a lot easier to facilitate your lover into becoming a better lover for you. So knowing your body is really an amazing tool to assist your lover in knowing how to pleasure you. If you don't know what works for you, it's really going to be tough for your partner, your lover to know what works for you as well. It's going to be a big guessing game. And if you're lucky, they're super psychic and can figure it out. And it may take a lot of trial runs. And if it does take trial runs, now that's fun as well. However, I think what what occurs sometimes with trial runs is people get frustrated because the communication is lacking. So lists can be a lot of ease for communication when you show your partner, hey, this is my to-do love list. This is my bucket list of love. Now, as a lover, can you imagine receiving somebody's bucket list of love and it's got like a hundred different ways that they'd like to pleasure you? hundred different places and ways and explorations they would like to experience with you and your body? How delightful would it be to see somebody's list of how much they've thought about how horny you make them, that they are thrilled, just, you know, they're thrilled to write the list 
And then they're thrilled for you to be able to receive that list. And just the joy and excitement your body has in receiving the list of the hundred fabulously great fun sex ideas that you're getting to gift and receive from each other. I think it's awesome. So on this break, what I'd like you to do is go fetch yourself something to write with. Either, you know, if you're writing in a phone app, use that. If you're using paper and pen, get that. During this little uh, next commercial, I'd like you to get your list so that we can start working on that right here, right now, with a whole bunch of ideas. And please don't do this if you're driving, though. You could, I suppose, record it if you want. So get your tools, get ready and get set. We are headed to our commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich where she will entice you and your body to know your own Pleasure Zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world, knowing your voice matters, and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, sweet pleasure seekers. We're having a chat about lists in the in our little conversation group in our chat room on Inspired Choices Network. So if you're listening live and would like to be in on this conversation, just jump on over to Inspired Choices Network, get in the chat room and join us for this chat. Uh, as, as we're having a chat that goes on along with having this live radio show at the same time. So super fun. And uh, you know what? I know what I know about sex is probably minuscule compared to what's available in the world because I see myself as a forever adventurer and a curiosity. Um, I, I'm just like a curiosity unto myself, but I'm also super curious about everything and anything. And the, what I find out is the more I learn, the less I know. I know it's a typical, like you've heard that statement before, but truly it's true. And as much research as I have done, over all of my years, I can definitely say there's always more to find out. So what we're going to do is we are going to, we're actually going to just start with some simple, simple things on the list. Now, I'm going to name some things and I'd like you to find a place on your list for where you want to put them. Are they things that you want, you would like to have more of? Things you definitely never want to try or things you're curious about? I'm going to just start naming some. So some of the most, uh, I'm going to name some common ones or things that I find common. So mutual masturbation was one of the top ones that I'd mentioned earlier. Now, what is mutual masturbation? That's when you're masturbating each other. So you can masturbate your partner. You can take turns doing that. You can do it at the same time. 
And then now let's add to that mutual masturbation part is, would you like to do it with toys, with lube? Would you like to add other things like cold, like ice or heat? Yeah. So mutual masturbation, you can add some different nuances to these things as well. So everything I'm mentioning, remember, these are kind of generalized of generalized uh, ideas. And there are nuances to these that I may mention. And some of the nuances may be on the yes part of your list. And some of the nuances may be no, and some may be, hmm, I'm willing to try that, right? So you might be interested in mutual masturbation, but you're not interested in using ice cubes for mutual masturbation. So ice cubes for mutual masturbation are off the list. However, Ice cubes might be a yes for having them rub down your spine or ice cubes on your nipples may be a yes. So it's not that ice cubes are out. It just might be ice cubes on your genitals for mutual masturbation is out. So do you get where I'm coming from? The lists can get pretty specific and you can get really clear on what it is your body likes. And also your body knows all of this too. So your mind might be saying to you, oh, no, no, my ego could never, you know, your mind might tell you all kinds of things because you've been told it's so naughty and wrong. And what I'm asking you to do is get really present with your body, feel your toes, feel your body, notice your body. And as I'm saying these things, I want you to check in with your body and see what lights your body up? What gets your body excited and has your body go, oh, oh, yes, actually, yes to that, instead of your mind going, no, 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 no. Please listen to your body on these. So mutual masturbation, and let's bring it down to some other subcategories. Using cold, how's your body feel about that? How does your body feel about ice cubes on the genitals? Cool. And then number two, how does your body feel about Mutual masturbation with heated lubes. Is that a yes or a no? Then how does your body feel about mutual masturbation with no heated lubes, regular lube? How does your body feel about mutual masturbation with no lube? And then how does your body feel with mutual masturbation with toys? Hmm. Do they need to be vibrators or dildos or what kind of toys? See where this is going? All right. So mutual masturbation, big category unto itself. There's already many things. And to add to that, a little kink to that would be, would you like in this lifetime to add to your sex bucket list, sending a video of yourself masturbating to your lover. Would that be a yes for you or a no for you or a maybe? What about video cam? Would you rather be live on video on video cam? It's just some ideas. So now we're adding more to the list, right? So now I'm also looking at some things like toys in general. You know, I kind of mentioned some toys there for mutual masturbation, but there are other toys. Like what kind of toys do you have? Do you have any toys in your life? And if you don't, is it something you're curious about? Is it something you'd like to add into your love life, into your sex life? Is some, maybe some vibrators, maybe some lube, maybe some, there's so many toys in the world. You'd be surprised and amazed. So Toys, question mark. What do you think? What do you think of toys? Do they interest you? Are they fascinating? What kind of toys would you like? Well, there are toys for all kinds of things. If I start from the head down, I would have to think we've got blindfolds, we've got gags, we've got restraints, we've got nipple clamps, we've got all kinds of ropes to be bound, we've got um, clitoral clamps, penile clamps, we've got anal plugs, we've got anal beads, vibrators, uh, masturbation sleeves, we've got many different kinds of vibrators within the vibrator category. So you have things like G-spot vibrators, 
Uh, you've got your standard vaginal vibrator, you've got clitoral vibrators, you've got dual action vibrators, you've got triple action vibrators, you've got vibrators that will operate from across the room, you've got vibrators that will operate from your cell phone. I know the list is crazy when you start looking at toys. And if we look at a bigger scope of toys, that would also include like AI dolls. Yeah, so artificial intelligent robot sex bot dolls. Maybe that's something you're interested in. So for in so where would you throw that in your category? Robots, you know, are you gonna put that on your yes, I'd like to try list? There's no way I'm gonna go in with a robot. Hmm, I'm curious. I'd like to maybe consider a robot. So there you go. I'm just throwing all of it out there. Toys is a huge category. And in those toys, those, as I mentioned, you might find some that your body is saying yes to like, and you might be surprised like, yes, nipple clamps. What? Who knew? And, <laughs> and, uh, you know, yes. Oh, yes. I like, you know, having a blindfold. Oh, yes, that's fun. So, so many things within the category of toys itself. And these are kind of standard toys that are available. This aren't even really getting into the hardcore BDSM style toys yet. So on the kind of um, kind of vanilla side of toys, we've got a lot of options available. And I encourage you to think about them and see and even explore. You can look online and look at pictures. If you're curious and you don't want to look online, um, but you'd like you know, me to show you some. I have a lot of toys that I sell. And if you'd like uh, to have a consultation with me, just connect with me. And I will be happy to set up a consultation to show you different toys and what they do and uh, what some of their qualities are. And sometimes it's easier to do that than it is to just go buy one online or to go into a store where you might feel embarrassed. So feel free to connect with me and we can talk sex toys and see what works for you. So that might be on your bucket list right there. Have a little sex toys talk with me. Hmm. Put that on your list, peeps. I dare you. And that means you'll need to connect with me so you can find me through my website at www.milicajelenic.com. That's one way to find me. And you can also find me on different social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram are my main uh, ones that I actually answer messages on. So you can message me on there, but tell me what it's about. Say, I'd love to have that sex toys chat with you. And I would love to have that sex toys chat with you. So let's try that. Now, if you did kind of skim through my shows, you might've noticed that in the last few months, the, the um, shows have there have been a lot of different shows for sure in over the last few years. And I think I recently did one on how to have dirty talk, but if I didn't, then I really should. I think it's when I think about a lot and it's to me, dirty talk is just how I talk most of the time. And it's also not only how I talk, but I'm also pretty goofy about it. So I don't make it too serious. Like I might say stuff like, I really love your cock to my husband. And he's just like, thanks. Would you like some coffee? It's just like a normal conversation in this house. And because I'm kind of like a dork about it and I'm totally like a sex nerd, it's um, it becomes dorky and fun. So if you can take away the stress of it or the seriousness of it, and you can just like have fun with it, then things like dirty talk can be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So I dare you to come up with like five wacky wild things to put on your sex bucket list that are dirty talk related. Maybe one of the things that are dirty talk related is you want maybe to become comfortable with saying the word cock to your lover or the word pussy to your lover uh, or both. Maybe you're so lucky that your lover's got both. That to me is on my bucket list. I would like to have uh, a lover for that has like both genitalia i think that would be fascinating i i know that's weird it's not on everybody's list it's on mine folks i would like to know what that would be like i just like to experience it so that's on my bucket list and yep i'm sure that just made a whole bunch of you go what well, I'm a curious bean, and I don't know about you guys, but there may be some things about bodies that you're curious about. Maybe in this lifetime, you've identified as um, homosexual, 
And so in that you've not experienced any um, sexual relations that are heterosexual relations. And maybe you're kind of curious, maybe you're hetero curious, maybe you're bi curious, maybe you're curious, but never taking that step. So maybe that goes on your list. And whatever comes up for you when I say that too, if that's like a uh, definite no, on some of these definite no's, I just want you to write them in your definite no column. And I want you to sit with how uncomfortable they make you. Yep, just sit in them and stew in them and see how uncomfortable they make you. And then it'll be fun to find out what is behind that that makes you so uncomfortable. That would be the healing end of it, but that's a whole other show. So those, those of, I will never, I will never, never, never is usually where you've got some stuff stuck and stored uh, and limiting you. However, we'll deal with that another day for today. I'd just like you to make that list. So I hope that I'm giving you some good ideas. We still have a lot more things to go through. So I want you to sit around and play and think about these things while I go to the next commercial. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and I'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich where she will entice you and your body to know your own Pleasure Zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight we're talking about sex lists and how sex lists can improve your sex life. One of the fun questions in the chat room is, if you could have sex with a robot from a sci-fi movie or a cartoon, who would it be? Um, the robot's a tricky one, but I could definitely pick characters from sci-fi shows um, that I would like and I'm pretty much any captain from Star Trek, I would be right in on that. Um, yes, even including the female captains, because they're hot, especially the latest female captain, uh, Michael Burnham. She's a hottie. She's on Discovery. I like her a lot. And uh, and Janeway, Captain Janeway is pretty cool too. her fabulous hairstyles. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty hot for the captains, I have to say. I don't think there's a captain I'm not hot for. Uh, even Kirk, even though he's like a total misogynist, I still pretty sexy. So I don't. I am glad that I've got other trekky nerds in the chat room with me who are totally digging it. Uh, my friend Jennifer is like loving Jordy LaForge, awesome, and Data as well, which is great. <laughs> and and uh, Oh yeah, seven of nine. Oh yeah, totally. Okay, I totally get that. So my friend Jennifer is saying that um, seven of nine is her lesbian cyborg crushed. Yeah, but I think everybody, 
right? I think everybody who's ever seen Seven of Nine is just like, yeah, yeah she's she's the bomb. So <laughs> even if you aren't into women, I think uh, you're into her. I think that's just how it goes. But also from Enterprise, I, I really liked, um, and, and as I'm not even in my Star Trek brain right now, I really like uh, from the Enterprise series, I like... Uh, the one who is the Vulcan and I can't remember her name offhand. So who are my nerd friends in the, uh, in the chat? Yeah. Yeah. Jolene Blaylock. Yeah. That was her. So she played a great uh, Vulcan. So good stuff. Anyway. So whew, there was a sidetrack, but if you are <laughs> into, if you are into nerd nerdiness and you want that on your list too, like, Maybe one of your things is to, you know, have sex while watching Star Trek. Um, that, I believe, was one of mine. But now I can say that's marked off. I've also, uh, I don't know, I've had sex to so many shows. I think it's fun. It's almost like having an audience. And there is, uh, I, I just think, you know, if the more you can enjoy yourself wherever you are, whatever you're doing, um, you know, if you're really enjoying a movie and you can add some sex to it, it's even more fun. You know, the movie becomes 10 times more exciting. And um, apparently there's a, there's a show right now that's on, on uh, Amazon. No, it's on uh, Crave and it's called Another Period. It's so psychotic, it's insane. It's psycho and hilarious at the same time. It, it is so deranged and picking, picking on um, all of the insanities of the early 1900s. And my husband is like so down for that movie. I swear, this, the sickness of it, the sickness of their humor, he's like, oh man, they're so sick, but it's like, something about that show gets him like super horny. So I hope they have 500 seasons of that show. And uh, I just try and put it on every night. I'm like, let's watch another period. And he's like, okay. I'm like, yes, these people are sick. I like it. <laughs> so, so maybe a little strange, funky weirdness turns you on. Um, so one of the things that occurred in one of the episodes last night was a guy was in jail and this woman was like giving him a hand job, but instead of, having him go to uh, the gallows he was supposed to be going to be hung uh, she thought that a, that a worse fate would be to be blue balled in jail <laughs> so, so it's that kind of crazy humor that we la like to laugh at but if it turns you on to have that kind of humiliation and if it turns you on to have that kind of uh, withholding or um, embarrassment put that on your list, put that on the, it's what you'd like to have list. Maybe you'd like a little embarrassment. Maybe you'd like to embarrass somebody. Maybe it turns you on to, uh, to turn somebody on and walk away and go, ha ha. Now you're blue bald. Maybe you are a royalties and that's what makes you excited. And if you are cool, know that about yourself, own it. Don't make it wrong and use it, use it to have more pleasure in your life. Cause you can, so whew, good times, good talks. Now, as we were talking about all this Star Trek stuff and sci-fi, it made me think about locations, location, location, location. Now, here's a million and 10 different places you could have sex, sex in every room of your house. Now, that's already going to be probably four places. Now, sex on top of anything that's in those rooms in your house so for example, in my office, I've got a desk, a sofa, and I've got massage tables and chairs. I've already got five places within my room and the floor, six places in my room that I could have some great sex. And I could tell you that I've had sex on three out of five of those so far. Then if we take it over to the dining room, there's a dining room table, there's dining room chairs, there's a floor, there's like shelving, so much fun. So how many places in your home are sex friendly and you can actually create them as sex friendly by getting things at the right height, making them comfortable. My husband actually installed our kitchen counters so that they are uh, sex height for him, for when he stands. Um, and they're perfectly good for when I'm cooking. So it was a genius move on his part when he installed them. We weren't even dating at the time, but it's like he knew the future and he was getting ready for that. So uh, find spaces and places in your home. For example, like the shower. If you've never done it in the bathroom or done it in the shower, 
go for it. You know, the bedroom is not the only place for having the best sex of your life. Then you might want to take it outside. Maybe you've got a porch. Like I have a porch that looks out to my field that like nobody could see you on. So having sex on the porch would be easy peasy, um, except for during black fly season, not so comfortable. So locations, how many different locations? I also have a roof on my house that is easy to access. Uh, maybe you live in a condo and you've got one of those uh, like walkout veranda type um, things that you can walk out. And maybe you're somebody who's a bit of a, of a, an exhibitionist and would like to be seen. So I think you guys could have a lot of fun. And that's really funny. Um, my friend Jennifer again is saying that uh, she used to ha- her lover used to have a great shower at his place, but in their house right now their showers aren't so great, so they need to upgrade. Upgrade for the upgrade for the sexy showers, absolutely. That should be like Merry Christmas, Jennifer. Here's a sexy shower head. <laughs> so locations in so many ways. So we're talking about homes, but you can also think of locations as in maybe doing it in the car or your van or at work or in the office, or in an elevator, or in the airplane, or in the movie theater. Like, there are places where it's illegal to do this, and if you get caught, you will be fined or arrested or whatever. Be smart. You know, if you're going to do this outdoors, do it in a place where you're not going to get caught. Maybe I should rent out my forest for people who want to just have sex in the forest. Now that, I bet there is nothing on Airbnb that anybody is renting sex forest spaces out. I don't know if Airbnb would let me do that somewhere. Somehow I've got to get the word out that I'm actually renting forest space for sex out there. I think I am onto something. Thanks, Keish. And for all of you who are listening, you guys are in on the first ground of this to be able to rent my forest for outdoor sex and not get arrested. Talking about getting arrested and doing possible illegal things, porn. Porn might be on your list as well. Making it, watching it, having some, creating it. I think that it is a pretty fun thing that you can use. Now, not to get addicted to, but to use as an addition to kind of spice things up. You know, find porn that works for you for sure. There's so much porn out there. And within that porn category, maybe you like, uh, homosexual porn maybe you like fetish porn maybe you're really just into watching people lick each other's boots hey whatever works for you so find the porn of your liking maybe you're all about anal porn moving into anal where's that fall on your list is that a yes is that a no is that a maybe zone And again, remember, if you're like, no effing way, well, maybe just sit with that, find out what that no effing way is about. And what if it could be like the pleasure of a lifetime that you've never experienced, that if you put it on your maybe list, it would just change your world. I encourage you to put some of those ones that you're like, absolutely no, to just nudge them in, nudge them over just a little bit to that maybe area. Could be fun, right? Sex picnic. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes. I think that my Airbnb idea is going to go wild. It's my idea. I own it. So um, for those of you who are like, I'm going to take that. As long as you give me credit, I'm okay with that. So porn, that's like watching things, but you can also take it down to things like reading different things, like reading maybe uh, uh, sexy ideas to each other, maybe erotica, maybe reading the Kama Sutra together or reading some tantric Uh, books. There's so many books even at the sex shops that could be a lot of fun to read. You can get uh, books on different positions and just read them out loud to each other. Could be a lot of fun. If you haven't tried the erotica, you could even get dorky with it too, because I'm I'm a full-on dork and making it dorky is even more fun. I also have a strange thing for puppets. So, you know, I'd probably bring puppets into this as well. And uh, lucky for me, my husband hasn't run away from me and my love of puppets. Now, I haven't had sex with puppets, and I'm not actually turned on in that way by puppets. I just really like to play with them. All right. Well, that was a side note. And so I have so many more things on the list I want to share with you guys. So phone sex, have you had any? Would you like to have some? I know that 
there used to be phone sex lines that you'd have to pay like three ninety nine a minute for phone sex, but now people are doing it all over the place. Sexting, phone sex, all of these things. Um, I, I seem to get a lot of uh, you know sexting type messages on social media. Um, I always find them interesting. I'm not really sure how to respond half the time, but I do offer that I will respond uh, in exchange for payment of my time. And that usually stops it right in its tracks. We did talk a little bit about video uh, sex, oral sex, oral sex. So how many different ways can you have oral sex? If you're really lucky, you can do oral sex with yourself because you're just like super, super able to bend now. If I probably could do that, I'd probably stay home all day long. As most people, if you can do that, let's face it, you're quitting your job and giving yourself oral sex as often as possible. And I think that uh, for the majority of us, we can't do that because the world requires us to actually do things and be functional and get you know work done and create. So otherwise, we would all be able to give ourselves oral sex and be like cats licking ourselves all day long. So licking yourself, but licking others, how fun would that be? So oral sex, and I just did an episode a week or two ago, all about blowjobs. Maybe it was just last week, all about blowjobs. So if you missed that episode, have a listen. It's the an entire hour on dedicated to just blowjobs, how to make them easier, how to have more fun with them, how to receive from them, from gifting them. Have a listen to the oral sex one. Well, just specifically blowjobs one. So now we're talking 69. 69s for everyone. Men on men, women on women, women on men, men on women. Bring in a friend. Maybe you're having not only a 69, maybe you're having a 669. Maybe you're having who knows what numbers you're creating. But I encourage you to have this fun times with oral sex and be smart about it. You know, if you have a partner who's got uh, evidence of things like herpes or STDs, use some mouth um, dams. So there are different things, dental dams. You can use these different things for your mouth so that you're not catching or spreading things like herpes. Um, and also you can use things like just being smart. If you see those, uh, if you see like herpes, or if you see an outbreak of some kind on your partner's genitals, just uh, let them, you know, get that dealt with uh, by a doctor and move on. Not move on from your lover necessarily, wait for them to heal and have some fun. But if you are doing 69s, just check, make sure you have clear zone before you're going down. And um, as I was saying, you could go 69, you could go 669, you could go 696. And that's where I'm talking about adding some friends into your play. So would you like to add somebody else to your lovership? Would you like to have a threesome? And then in the category of threesome, what would you like to add to your life? You know, would you like to add a woman or a man, uh, somebody who's maybe non-gender specific, maybe you know, you're looking for somebody who's more pansexual and doesn't identify as any specific gender, you might not have even considered that as an option. So now you can. And I'm also looking at if you're willing to have threesomes, how many more people are allowed to come play? Are you polyamorous? Would you like to be polygamous? Would you like to actually be beyond polygamous and just be like an orgy kind of orgy-tastic kind of person waiting to play all day long in every way possible. So if you are ready for something like orgies, put that on your list. Is that in your, yes, I'm definitely going to go for this? Maybe, maybe not. However, play with it. Think about it. And I'm going to let you guys think about that. And as we go to our next break, because, you know, orgies are a pretty big topic. Think about that. Stew with it. Who would you like to add to your orgy? I hope I'm on the list. And we are going to head to our next commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, 
you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly, other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenic. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email info at melitzayelenich.com Now, back to the program. Welcome back to the Pleasure Zone, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight we've been talking about how we can use lists to improve our sex lives. And I was actually really interested in creating this show because I've had several people who I asked to create lists for uh, things you desire, things you definitely are not desiring, and things you're willing to explore. And a lot of people will respond to me by saying, but I don't even know where to start with this. So we're starting with some pretty basics. We, we've we talked about a few things. Feel free to go back and listen. And I'd like to add a few more before the show is over. And you know, some of the things that we haven't tapped into are some playful things like role play pick a role. What would you like to, who would you like to be? What would you like to play with? Um, throw in some sex games. I know uh, some real fun can be creating your own sex dice. Like you can get, you know, some clay or you can buy some dice. I actually bought these like dry erase marker dice at the dollar store and you can write on them. You could write anything you want. You could write words on it, like blow job on one, uh, you know, you write acts on one uh, dice and then locations on the other roll those dice and have some fun. And also we were talking earlier about different places in the house, like showers and whatever, which made me also think of different other water locations, like pools, hot tubs, uh, you know, the ocean, the different lakes on a boat. Uh, It's just like, can you just imagine like locations alone? There's thousands of places in the world you could play the i've done it in every capital city in north america game you could do it i've done it in every capital city in canada whatever uh kind of sparks your thoughts or if you haven't really been outside of your state or province then maybe it's going to uh, every major city in in your uh in your state or province just to have uh sex in any hotel in any state or province and I, uh, one of the people in the chat room says they've done in every public restroom in Round Rock, Texas. Man, Sheila, I'm so proud of you. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so freaking cool. So when you have targets like that, your targets are awesome. I love it. And maybe you have a target of like doing it in every restroom too. I think that's hilarious. And maybe it's like you have a desire to like give a hand job on every single roller coaster in North America. Go for it. Uh, probably illegal. And if you do get arrested, it's not because I told you so. It's because you chose it. But I still encourage you to have lots of fun locations. Uh, senses uh, like heat and touch and taste and bring them all in. What would you like to taste? What would you like to touch? You know that I could go on for hours. Why? Because I already have gone on for hundreds and hundreds of hours talking about sex. Please use my shows as a reference for making your list because there are so many things in, uh, in these in these shows that can contribute to you. Um, One of my challenges too, that I'd like you to put on your list is uh, how many orgasms you would like to have in a day. So is it 10? Is it one? Is it none? Put that on your list of uh, what you would like to have. And I have a friend, um, Gaia Morissette, who on her birthday, she just turned 46. She has as many orgasms as she is old. So She had 46 this year, the other week. Yay, Gaia. Anyway, this show is just about to wrap up. You know I could go on forever. I love all of you for listening. And I really would love to hear all of you go a little bit crazy, have a little bit of fun, even go into the absurd. Like the absurd for you might be um, things like urine uh, fetishes or something. Have fun. Check it all out. Remember that until next week, just remember to stay tuned in and turned on. 
Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Jelenic. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.